Hi, I'm Mark Jensen, a re-recording mixer here in Los Angeles. By necessity, I'm also an audio editor, be it dialogue, effects, backgrounds. One challenge of any sound design project is constantly trying to find where the next video edit occurs. You're banging on the plus or minus keys, constantly hunting for it. I've always wanted a way just to be able to see in the timeline where that next edit is. So I developed C-Cut, a standalone Mac OS application that scans through a video file and exports a set of markers as a MIDI file that you can import into Pro Tools. So in this video, I'm gonna go through how the app works. But before I do, let me right here and now tell you three very important things that you will need to know about using C-Cut. Thing one, Pro Tools cannot display more than a thousand markers at a time. Thing two, you cannot have any current markers in your session before importing the markers C-Cut will generate. Later in the video, I'll show you how to export your current markers if you wanna save them. Thing three, when importing the MIDI data, you must check the Import Tempo Map checkbox in order for the markers to line up in the right place. Okay, let's see C-Cut in action. First, we'll launch C-Cut. The interface is laid out from top to bottom, pretty much in the order of the things it needs to know in order to create our markers. Step one is choosing a video file we want to scan. Now I'm gonna set our timecode base to 23976 temporarily in order to show you something. C-Cut will work with compressed video files encoded in either the H.264 or ProRes codex, in either the QuickTime or MPEG-4 file format. It will not read DNX files. Notice a couple things. The timecode bar has switched to 2997 drop because C-Cut senses what the nominal frame rate of the video is and switches it for you. However, C-Cut cannot tell the difference between drop and non-drop video, so you may need to further adjust this setting. Also, down in the console window, C-Cut is showing us our video path and has displayed the video's nominal frame rate and some other information you can read more about in the guide under the help menu. I do recommend reading the guide. Next step is to determine a destination folder for the MIDI file C-Cut will write. Next, we name our MIDI file and we won't need to append the .mid. C-Cut will do that for us. Make sure the name you give the file is unique. C-Cut will not overwrite a file that currently exists in the destination folder. Now we're gonna enter four time codes. You can type these in using the keypad just as you would in Pro Tools, and you can also copy and paste these. First, we need to enter a session start time code. This is the time code displayed when you hit the return button in Pro Tools, where you can find it in your session setup window. It should go without saying that your session needs to be the same frame rate as your video, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it anyway. So my session starts at 57002, but I'm gonna type in some non-existent time codes to see what happens. Notice if I put in a time code that doesn't exist, the numbers turn red. C-Cut also detects values that don't exist in drop frame as well. C-Cut will not run until all the numbers in the timecode fields are black. So if you have red numbers, please double check your values or frame rate. Next, we need to enter what frame the video starts on. This does not mean the first frame of action. We need the absolute first frame of your video, be it bars or slate or whatever. So my first frame is at 5950. Now we can tell C-Cut how much of the video to scan. Remember, Pro Tools can only display a thousand markers at a time. This video is about 50 minutes of television, meaning it may have 1,500 plus video edits. If I scan the entire video in one shot, C-Cut will write a marker for every edit, but Pro Tools will only display the first 1,000. From experience, I can tell you that there are probably gonna be more than a thousand edits in this 50 minute long video. So I'm just gonna scan up to a halfway point. I enter my beginning scan point of one hour even. And earlier I found an act break in my show that was at 1.22.53. Notice there is a use last frame button here. When I get around to scanning the second half of this video, I'll enter this 22.53 timecode as my start, and I simply ask C-Cut to use the last frame of video. As long as C-Cut has the session and video start timecodes, it will accurately calculate this frame's timecode. Lastly, we have the modes. C-Cut can use one of two ways to determine where edits might be. 
The default method is by comparing one frame to the next, and if the change from one frame to the next exceeds a certain threshold, we'll call that an edit. I'll talk more about this threshold control in a moment. In some videos, when they were rendered, they might have been allowed to create their own keyframes at their own discretion, which would most likely have been when there was a significant change between one frame and the next. We can simply ask the frame, are you a keyframe? And if the answer is yes, we create a marker assuming there's an edit there. Believe it or not, this method is very accurate and is also extremely fast. If when the video was rendered, it was forced to create a keyframe every two seconds or so, this method probably won't work. If you run it and it only finds two edits or some other low number, use the default method instead. Now we're ready to start the scan and let CCut find where the video edits are. A progress bar lets you know what percentage of the scan is complete, and it also gives you a running total of your edits. Keep an eye on it that we don't exceed 1000 here. One thing to keep in mind is that CCut is not perfect. There are going to be situations where CCut is fooled into thinking there was an edit where there wasn't one. Camera pans, zooms, flashing lights, shaky camera work, these will lead to significant shifts between one frame and the next. Also, CCut will miss edits, and sometimes ones that are pretty obvious. But on the whole, it gets a large majority of them right. Also, because it's writing markers, if they're wrong, you can delete them, or create markers where needed. Okay, our scan is complete, and we can see that we were successful. Our MIDI file has been written. However, we've only scanned half the show. Let's quickly scan the other half right now. For my next scan, I don't need to reselect the video file since I'm using the same video, nor do I need to reset the destination folder. I do need to give this file a unique name, however, so I'll call this part two. My session start time and my video start time are the same, so I can leave those. But now my start scan time code is 122.53, and here I'll use the use last frame feature. It will enter in the last frame of video for me. This may be off by a frame or so, that's not important. Running this now will create my second MIDI file. Let's import it into Pro Tools and see how we did. Remember, no markers in the session. Import MIDI is Control Option I. We select our file and remember, we must click on the Import Tempo Map box. This other box you can leave blank. And voila, here are our markers and we can begin going through the timeline and seeing how many of the markers line up to actual picture edits. If you want to export markers, first create a dummy MIDI track. Then click File, Export, and choose MIDI. Let's talk a little bit about this threshold. What does this 10 mean? So CCut is averaging the red, green, and blue component of a sample of pixels throughout the frame. Think of it as the average color of an entire frame. So a frame might have an average whose RGB values, let's say, are 80, 100, and 120. If the next frame is not an edit, it will probably have a value pretty close to the last value. Maybe it'll be like 80, 100, and 122. This threshold setting is saying as long as the difference of any one of those RGB value numbers doesn't change by this number, then it's not an edit. But if one of those values is different by more than this value, so let's say the next frame is 80, 100, and 140, then we'll say that is an edit because the difference between 140 and 122 is 18, and that's larger than our threshold of 10. This value I have set as a default after testing many videos but I will leave it up to you as to which value to use. A higher number is less sensitive. You will have less false positives, meaning markers where there is no edit, but you will also miss more real edits where there is only a subtle shift in the overall color of the frames. Conversely, a lower number is more sensitive, so you might catch more of those subtle changes, but you'll also write more false positives. Lastly, two quick notes. I have found that C-Cut doesn't work on every single video. I still don't know why this is, but you may come across videos where C-Cut can simply not find the edits. Secondly, this is an early version of C-Cut. There may be bugs. If you come across some bizarre behavior, please document it and send it to me at mark at postproductiontools.com. 
Thanks for watching. I hope this makes the work that you do as an editor a little easier.